Yes, yes, yes. Happy evening to all of you. Welcome into Panisha and in 12 weeks of Friday Kenyan Water Talk Show, the Friday Water Educators Forum. And uh, today is a great, great day, a very special day because this is for the very first time uh, we are going to listen to the the host spends of the 35 years of experience and expertise and uh, he has been on the medical advisory board for Inagic as a company and uh, I was really blessed and privileged uh, uh, to go on oxidation, inflammation, and body and effects of electrolyzed reduced water. Now, when you go through this interview, you will also realize uh, one more interesting fact, amazing fact. I had uh, listened to this fact for the very first time when I went through this interview that Enagic as a company has done a lot of clinical Hello, there is something internet fluctuations. Sorry for that. Yeah, am I audible? Uh, in the meanwhile, while I'm uh, figuring out my technical issue on the laptop, uh, the good news is that uh, it was amazing revelation for me to understand that Inagic has done a lot of clinical trials on electrolyzed reduced water, understanding the impact of Kengen water on inflammation at tissue levels, at cellular levels, uh, to understand scientifically that the water works. Isn't it amazing? A clinical trial done at the tissue level, at a mitochondria level. So the information is well backed up, well supported. A water ionizer company and uh, doing something like a clinical research on the effect of the water uh, in different levels. And uh, that was amazing revelation as a chief of medical advisory board, uh, that is Dr. Hose Pilsa, and you all guys are going to be lucky to witness this interview and understand the clinical backup that we have. So whatever we have been sharing, sharing so, so far, far in, in terms, terms of, of antioxidant, antioxidant alkalinization, alkalinization or microclustering. So whatever we have been talking uh, and showing it as part of our demonstration so far, Guys, it is absolutely authenticated. Only that we need to understand the little details uh, on the subject while uh, sharing it with people. Of course, on this platform, we maintain a protocol and the decorum that uh, there is a strong disclaimer. We have disclaimers. We don't claim uh, any kind of cures. We don't uh, claim any kinds of prevention. We talk of energetic Kengen water as a water, water for superior hydration, water for superior detoxification, water for energy, immunity, and wellness. So ladies and gentlemen, without touching upon claims on cures or prevention, but still there is a lot of clinical trial and research that we are backed up with. So that is what we are going to witness in today's session. It's going to be a one hour long video. How many of you have decided that you are going to stay on this platform for the next one hour, nine minutes? Please type I, 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 I in the chat box. Secondly, 
Felicia follows a protocol of gratitude. Gratitude for whatever good we receive from anybody from any part of the world. So we believe in giving back gratitude. We believe in giving back credits. This video, this replay of Zoom comes to us from Rita Neves, who's also there on this platform. You can acknowledge blessings, blessings, blessings to Rita from this platform for being so generous, for being so kind to share this Zoom replay, which was done in their teams back in Canada, Toronto. Toronto, right, Rita? You're from Toronto, great. So they have done this session back in Toronto. She was kind enough to really extend this support, this education, this life-changing information to all of us. Please keep time. Blessings, blessings, blessings. And whatever good happens to any one of us after this session while taking forward this subject of water to people, let a part of the blessings and the royalty go back to Rita also for being the kind and generous lady that she has been. So Rita, from this platform, absolutely gratitude soulfully from all of us to you. And God bless you. If you want to share something for just two minutes, you can introduce yourself and share your experience in two minutes. I, well, I don't want to take too much time from everyone, but on the video, Dr. Filzer mentions a book and I got it off of Amazon. So it is still available if anyone asks. Um, and yes, I'm just so blessed. Thank you so much. I'm so honored to be here and so honored to know you. And um, that is it. Just blessings for all of us and may all of our businesses rise and progress and prosper. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you, Rita, for that wonderful short introduction here. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, are we ready now with our paper, pen and notes? Unless you are ready with notes, you are not eligible to sit here and we are not ready to play the video. It's an exclusive video, guys, that we have got hold of thanks to Rita once again. And so we need to make a lot of notes today. And for those of you who do not understand uh, the American accent or the English or certain uh, technicalities of the subject, at the end of the session, we will summarize the whole thing, but probably we'll have to have an extended session today because this Zoom replays itself one or nine minutes. After that, if somebody wants a summary or just in a localized version, we are here to do that also. Provided all of you want that summary, please type yes, yes, yes in the chat box so that we would know exactly summary is required, the gist is required uh, in our local languages, comfortable languages, the way we all can understand from the team. So it might be extended by under 15, 20 minutes if at all required. Okay, so at the end of the session, we'll check with everybody. Now let's get ready for this video. All of you stay muted throughout the session unless we are going to talk. List your queries, keep your queries ready. At the end of the session, we'll take those queries also. Thank you. Haru, you can play the video. Okay, we are recording. Thank you everyone for being here. I know people are still jumping on. This is a very, very exciting night. I am so excited. I'm so excited that you're all here with us. First of all, I highly respect people that want to learn um, more ways um, to be healthy, right? Learning new ways to be healthy. I have huge admiration for that. You are in for an extraordinary, um, whatever amount of time we get. I would like to sit here for about five hours. I know that that's not realistic. We'll, we'll try to keep this to about 45 minutes to an hour, but I'm, re I'm not even going to talk very long. Nobody wants to hear me tonight. This is about hearing from an incredible uh, physician, decorated veteran, um, renowned vascular surgeon. I'm going to let him tell his own story because his credentials, I was going to be reading them. Let me tell you, they're pages and pages of just really incredible, uh, incredible life story and, and he's still doing amazing things. So um, let me introduce Dr. Horst Filzer, um, again, renowned vascular surgeon, uh, Enagix medical advisor for many, many years, even while he was still in um, practice and throughout practice and 
still practicing as, as some of you got the chance to hear as you jumped on early. So thank you, Dr. Filter, for being here. Would you mind giving us um, a little bit of a background um, of your um, time in the military, your schooling and medical practice? Well, I am an immigrant to this country. Uh, my father was a prisoner of war in the United States. He was in the Africa Corps in uh, Africa under Rommel, and he was captured, brought to the United States, and uh, he felt he was treated so, so extremely well that uh, when, after World War II, we immigrated to the United States and we wound up in Fargo, North Dakota in 1955. I went to high school there, and then I went to the University of North Dakota and uh, graduated from there in 1959. And subsequent to that, I went to medical school and graduated from Harvard Medical School in 1965. I trained in the Harvard system at the Boston City Hospital and uh, did an internship, which was interrupted by the Vietnam War. I wound up in the 9th Infantry Division in the Mekong Delta Mobile Riverine Force as a battalion surgeon, combat surgeon. I spent 14 months in combat and make on Delta and uh, I received a few decorations and subsequent to that went on with the rest of my career which finished my residency and my fellowship and I started practice in 1973 at the Cambridge Hospital as the assistant director of the Department of Surgery. And I was spent 40 years there as a assistant director, associate director, and then chairman of the department and program director. In 1965, uh, sorry, in 2006, I had to retire because I was over 65 and that was the rule. The Cambridge Hospital is a public hospital. So anyway, I came out to Arizona in 2006 kind of a cute little story. A bunch of my buddies from Massachusetts, we took a trip down to uh, Bullhead City, Arizona, which had a big biker rally. This was way back when. And on our way going to Oatman, which is sort of a tourist attraction with old mules and gunfights and what have you, uh, I saw this development of how homes. And geez, I said, look at that some very attractive looking homes. And I inquired about the price and I was flabbergasted because you could buy a house for $150,000. You can't buy a garage in Massachusetts for $150,000. So I bought a house. Anyway, we moved there. We still kept our places in Massachusetts and I've been here ever since. I got introduced to Enagic uh, by a patient of mine, actually. He was uh, from North Dakota, and he had an aortic aneurysm, and he needed to have that fixed because it was actually huge. It was nine centimeter aneurysm, so those, those are big things. And I met him in Bullhead. I was in practice there then, so I fixed it for him and uh, asked him to stay in the area for a while because he lived in Las Vegas. So I had him stay at my house because I found out the guy was a classmate of mine at North Dakota. We just didn't meet each other because, you know, the different fields we were in. And when he came to my house, he put this machine on the table and he said, Doc, do you mind if I hook it up? I said, well, knock yourself out, hook it up. What is it? Well, it's a water machine. It's the best damn water you can drink. It will make you healthy, wealthy, and wise, and all that kind of stuff. And I said, well, look, you know, I'm not a big water drinker, but let me give it a shot. And I drank the water, and I have to tell you, it floored me. It was different. It was just plain different instantly. I drank the water. I didn't feel full. 
I felt it was very digestible. I liked it going down because it did slosh up in my stomach. And I said, boy, this is interesting. I bought a machine. And kind of the rest is history because I uh, made a video back in 2008 and people seemed to like it. And they asked me to become the medical you know, advisor. And that's what I've been doing ever since for Enagic. In 2015, I uh, got Mr. Oshiro to give me some money for basic research. And I was hoping and still am hoping that more of that would be ongoing, but we have been able to show a different look at Canyon Water. And the different look is based on scientific proof of efficacy. Translated, it means how does it work inside the body? Because if you can't prove how it works inside the body, anything else you say is conjecture. And outfits like the Federal Trade Commission or the FDA or any of the government regulatory agencies, they don't look kindly upon claims that you cannot verify. So I saw my job as being the guy to verify certain claims, not all claims that would be sort of a ridiculously difficult thing to do, but at least some of the things, and we started out in human tissue culture and the reason we did that was very simply to convince Mr. Oshiro that not all research needs to be super expensive, but ultimately you would have to do living human beings. And we did get to that. And so the rest is history. And I'll be happy to discuss with you what it is that we found and what it is that we can say as distributors, as, as, as people with confidence that it is not controversial and backed by science. And that's all the government regulatory agencies need to know. They need to know that a company that uh, makes a product that is related to human health doesn't make fancy claims that are unsubstantiated. If you substantiate your claims, you're good to go. If you uh, quote uh, Otto Warnberg and tell that you know it cures cancer or that cancer can't live in an alkaline environment, well, that's, first of all, he never said that, but also it's uh, untrue, you know, so there we are. I love that. So I do want to dig into that. I've got um, a couple of people saying, first of all, that they're having trouble hearing over the volume on the television, wondering if that could be turned down a little bit. My TV? Sure. Yes. Let me turn it off. Hang yes. On. Thank you so much. How's that? Thank you. That's that's great. A couple of people were just struggling to hear you, and it was such great information. So thank you for that. You know, I love what you just said because there are so many misconceptions. Now I've been drinking Kangen water for eight years. Um, I immediately was super excited about learning about it, and yeah, there's a lot of misconception. I've done a lot of um, you know training at the corporate office, a lot of instruction that way. Um, but I would love to have you talk about your study because this, like, like you said, you know, we can't argue with when we have studies. So I'm going to read this. First of all, scientific study results on the benefits of Kangen water in the human tissue culture and living human volunteers. I've read this, I don't know how many times, and I love it because what this is doing is groundbreaking. It's changed what we know about Kangen water. It allows us to be able to speak confidently um, and truthfully about the, the benefits, right? And, and the properties of the water, which is really all we need to talk about. But your research shows genuine proven physiological 
effects in the human body and in the human cell. And I love that because that provides proof. And proof is, like you said, everything. So we talk about the properties of the water being superior hydration, antioxidant, and then we talk about the alkalizing. So could you touch on um, the antioxidant value, first of all, because I, that's my favorite. Okay, well, let me begin first with uh, the antioxidant property. I do agree is probably one of the most important and most powerful things that Kangen water does. You know, you stick the little thing into the uh, ORP into the uh, test tube and it registers 8900 and that's all very nice and good. But what does that translate into? So when we did our tissue culture experiments and did incubate the, the uh, tissue cultures with Kangen water, we were able to show a clear antioxidant effect in simple human tissue culture. And the antioxidant effect was the strongest, and I mean super strong at pH 11.5, but clearly very good at 9.5. The other thing we did as a corollary was to check if it does anti-inflammatory things, because that's one of the things, you know, your arthritis will go away and all of these claims, well, that would indicate that there has to be an anti-inflammatory effect. And again, in tissue culture, it dramatically reduced the degranulation of neutrophils. Now, what that means is that neutrophils react to foreign invaders and create an inflammatory response to fight them. And if you have an anti-inflammatory effect, then that response is subdued. You have to understand that the inflammatory response is both good and evil. It's good when you get a cut. The inflammation goes in, the platelets goes in, you get a clot, and your bleeding stops and your wound heals. That's an anti an inflammatory response. And the same is true if you have a disease that goes muck, the inflammatory response starts to attack your own tissues. Joint lining, you get arthritis. You get your intestine attacked, you get inflammatory bowel disease, ulcerative colitis, Crohn's disease, virtually 90% of all non-infectious diseases are caused by an inflammatory response gone awry, overexpressed, and then the disease and tissue problems occur. How do we treat these diseases? Steroids, Wouldn't you stop inflammatory, uh, aspirin, anti-inflammatory drugs, NSAIDs, all kinds of things. So bottom line is if an, uh, uh, water or a substance is anti-inflammatory, that's a helpful thing for the human condition. And we showed that in tissue culture. And one additional thing that uh, the person we were working with Dr. Jensen, uh, who uh, is just one of the smartest people I've ever known. She uh, is into natural substance research. She suggests that we see if the water in tissue culture can affect the metabolism of the mitochondria. Now the mitochondria is the engine of the cell. That's where ATP is made. If you can tweak this thing and make it work better, that would also be a good thing because ATP equals energy within the human body. And sure enough, in the presence of glucose, this water upregulates the metabolism. It cranks up the rate of production of ATP. So that's the first chapter in our research. 
and we presented that to uh, Mr. Oshiro and we walked in there begging for more money and he agreed to fund a study in human beings. And that'll be the next chapter of what I want to talk about. And I'll just stop here for a minute in case anybody has any questions right now. That is fascinating. The energy center of the cell, when we can upregulate that, I mean, that, that is so fascinating. So when we talk about antioxidant, I have so many questions and so many notes here. I'm trying to choose which one to go to next. Um, the antioxidant, it, um, is antioxidant directly related to um, slowing the aging process at the cellular level in the body? Well, I don't necessarily say directly. However, let me say this, that the antioxidant effect on cells is profound, correct? Now, in the subsequent evolution in living human beings, it would become pretty clear that the anti-aging process is absolutely related to on how long we can keep our stem cells functioning. All of us have stem cells in our bone marrow. And the stem cells, the longer they stay with you and don't die out, the longer you will live. This is analogous to what we call telomere shortening. The DNA strands at the end of them have little appendages, they're called telomeres. And over time, they shorten and decay. And when they reach a short, certain length, the cell dies. It's called apoptosis and you're done. Now, canyon water has been shown in incubation with primitive organisms, not human, but planaria, flatworms and stuff. There's a lot of basic research on that. And they've actually shown that it helps lengthen the telomeres and that it actually helps uh, aging in these primitive organisms. Also, in some of these species where you cut the animal in half and it regenerates, canyon water produces rapid regeneration. But again, that was that I got to do. We're human. We're far too complex from this organism. So when we did the subsequent study, we did find some very, very clear evidence that uh, inflammation is subdued, cytokines are produced, superoxide dismutase is produced, and all of these things come from out of the bone marrow. So there is no question in my mind, if we study stem cells in relationship to Kangen water, we would find that there is a positive effect. Why? Because the bone marrow is profoundly affected right now by Kangen water in the production of anti-inflammatory cells and substances and in the production and subduing of inflammation, all of which is bone marrow related. So there you go. That is fascinating. I love it. I love it. So, you know, helping the body to work better as it already is working, doing what it's already doing, just doing it better because hydration is the foundation of everything the body is, every process, every function, every cellular function, correct? So when we talk about delivering antioxidant, we talk about helping the body with suboxide dimutase. Did I say that correctly? That's, is that the most powerful antioxidant that our body produces? Yes. Yes. And the interesting thing is that superoxide dismutase is primarily, primarily produced in the liver. And uh, that is an effect that blew me out of the water. I had not expected that. Uh, when we studied in living human beings and drew tons of blood and serum from them and froze it because that study was the most costly part, analyzing all these complicated chemicals. 
that study uh, I expected would show a cytokine production that favors inflammation, anti-inflammation, and antioxidation. And it did all that. But out of the blue, we tested for superoxide dismutase, which is an antioxidant purity. It's not a cytokine. And it's produced in the liver. And it upregulated two and a half to three times. And that is absolutely huge. Yeah. And, and you know, uh, antioxidants are a very important thing in health maintenance. And antioxidants is what you get in your diet normally. Fruits, vegetables, healthy things. And now, of course, antioxidants are commercially sold in, in packages, you know, all kinds of different coquite, coquite and resveratrol, 14,000 unpronounceable names. But the fact of the matter is no one has ever shown that a healthy diet, fruits, vegetables, fresh stuff, you know, stuff that grows in the soil, stuff that, stuff that we eat, you know, from the tree, apples, oranges. If you eat a healthy diet, there's absolutely no evidence that adding antioxidants commercially makes any difference to your health whatsoever. You can live totally healthy, but grows on trees, what grows in the soil, what grains you eat, what have you. So it's fascinating that the water can squeeze out that superoxide dismutase out of the liver much more powerfully than ordinary tap water. And that's to me is probably, well, it was surprising to me and it's profound. It's profound in two to three times. Yeah. That's incredible. That makes me really, really excited. Um, so getting that from the water is great. And then, you know, of course, drinking water, we want to absorb it. So one of the things you said when you had your first glass was you felt like it went, correct me if I'm saying this incorrectly, it went down easier. You drank it easier. It was easier to drink water. Um, and then can you talk about why it's easier to drink this water? and how it absorbs, we talk about the superior absorption, like what, what is the absorption and um, how would you describe it compared to other waters? Well, this may surprise you a little bit, but water is absorbed. There were a couple of guys from the University of Minnesota who got the Nobel Prize for this. They found in the human intestine where we absorb our nutrients, things called aquaporins, they call them. Those are entries into the cell, into the human cell, where water goes through. And interestingly enough, only one molecule of water can go through at a time. And I'm sure you'll all know about microclustering. We've been talking about microclustering and it's been explained that because the microclusters are smaller, more water molecules can go in to the cell faster. Well, that's really not true. Only one can go in at a time. So what's the deal? Why is it absorbed better? Well, here it is. Microclustering exists. All water is in a constant dynamic state and it resonates and it forms clusters from dimers, which is two molecules, to 256 molecule aggregation or more. And it goes back and forth constantly. But when you apply that electric current, that ORP, and you make it electrolyze water, more of the smaller clusters appear substantially more and there, that's where they sometimes call it hexagonal water you know and these uh, clusters are uh, much smaller so when we drink the water these clusters get into 
the villi, which are the little prongs inside your intestinal tract where water gets absorbed and is transported into the interstitial space of these entities. Now, the interstitial space is a space between cells, and they get fat in there because so much more of that water gets in there. And that's the first stage of absorption. The second stage is one by one, they finally go into the cell. So you drink Kangen water, Kangen water is absorbed in the stomach. It's even absorbed partially in the distal esophagus because of the microcrustum. By the time you reach the duodenal sweep, when you drink that water, it's all in you. Whereas only about, depending upon how hard your water, the pH is normally, only about max 70% of the water, that's even stretching it, ever gets into your intestine, into your intestinal interstitial space. So much of it is actually totally wasted. But so much less is wasted with kind of water. That is incredible. So there's there so this to get this is another misconception that people talk about, right? So microclustering now we know is real, but we know how it's actually hydrating us, because hydration, drinking water is one thing, but actually absorbing it. Right, just like eating food is one thing, but actually absorbing the nutrition is a whole other animal. So having a, a hydrated body means every cell, this is how I always describe it, and correct me if I'm wrong, but having a hydrated body means that everything can work better because water is the basis of-, of it's, a, it's like having a full tank of high test gas. You know, Ooh, I like you, know you got a high, you got, your tank is full, you have a reserve. You know, it, 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 no one in Arizona goes anywhere in the summer without water. You have water in your car. You have every, if you go outside of my house for 10 miles into the desert, when it's 125 degrees, I don't care how hydrated you are, you will be dead in one hour and 45 minutes if you don't have water. And it happens all the time, by the way. Wow. People go out in a program. 125 degrees is like Abu Dhabi, you know, it's hotter than Hades. But anyway, you well, learn from that. Water being the, you know, the element of survival next only to air. I mean, it makes sense that we should choose a water that is, you know, the best quality and, and delivering antioxidant and actually absorbing. So we're getting the best, you know, the best water. The, the next thing that I want to talk about, because it's one of probably the biggest misconception out there, I think, is the alkalinity component. Um, if we could talk about that, a lot of people have questions about stomach acid and alkaline water and ionized water versus alkaline water. And what, what does that component of this water mean? How do you describe that? Well, I mean, the alkalinity is that it is closer to our body pH, which is useful. I mean, that's very useful. And so the alkaline water is better absorbed and it's better for us. You know, we do not allow people to drink pH 2.5 water because it can kill you. And not just that, it's not designed for drinking. It serves a different function. Now, it will kill every known bacterium including viruses and prions on the planet. That water alone will. And I used it in wound care a great deal because it will kill bacteria on wounds and because it decays, right? It's ionized, it decays over time and fairly quickly. It'll kill the bugs, but it won't damage the tissues. That's what makes it so great. On the alkaline side, that's what you need to get into your body for pH balance and for everything else. Now, the misconception about mixing the water with the stomach acid is a product of physiology. 
the resting stomach pH is around 3.84 and so on. There is no free acid in the resting stomach because if there were, we digest our own stomach. I mean, we, we would kill us. And one of the reasons you get perforated ulcers and gastric and duodenal ulcer is when there is a condition of hyperacidity in the stomach by stress or by other things. Now, those days are gone uh, when we saw a lot of that because of a bit, you know, H2 blockers and all that kind of other stuff. But in the resting stomach, there is a layer of mucus across the entire parietal cell mass where the acid is made. And in order to produce acid, which is essential to our digestion, right? We need to inject acid in our stomach to mix with certain foods. But the stimulus to acid production primarily is meat and food. Meat is the most powerful one. The second most powerful one is alcohol. And other foods have varying degrees of it. But plain water, including canyon water, does nothing to evoke an acid response. Therefore, very little gets neutralized, if any, and it goes right into your intestine and is absorbed. That's the secret, basic physiology. Claude Bernard, 1898, discussed the physiology, physiology of water and the absorption of the stomach and nothing has changed. So I love that. Yeah. I love that. So it's not acidic, mm -hmm. it's not creating a challenge for the body to have to, right. to deal with the acidity, which we have enough of, right, even with stress. <laughs> You know, oh, yeah. things like stress and so on can produce acidity. I mean, you know, what we call uh, psychosomatic illnesses. I mean, doing lots of used to be one because it was so much stress related. When I was at Harvard Medical School, when there were exams scheduled, we had a class of 154 in, uh, in my class. We'd have two or three people get a perforated ulcer studying for exam, you know, uh, uh, obsessing about passing and all that, because it's a highly competitive outfit at, at Harvard. It was a kind of a culture shock for me to go from North Dakota to Boston, you know, with my one big suitcase and wind up. I mean, uh, they didn't know that there was, you know, all, the, all these classmates of mine, they had no clue that there's North and South Dakota. They called it Dakota. Dakota. Well, yeah, and you were and, Dakota. <laughs> and and I want and I don't know if everybody knows this, but you um, were given a scholarship and and graduated with honors. So I mean, Harvard is impressive, and you know, to to go in a scholarship and graduate with honors, like we are um, in the presence of. I, I just think you know, I, I just your wisdom, your knowledge, your experience, everything, and then to have the information with the studies that, that you've done and are continuing to do. I just, we're just so grateful. We're so grateful to have you and have this information. Um, have, my wife sometimes says to me, I could talk a hungry dog off a meat wagon. And uh, <laughs> I, you know, I like, I like people and I, I think we have a wonderful product. I think there is so much wide open opportunity to showcase this even better and to make it even better. And, you know, this COVID thing has screwed up so many things. Uh, I haven't gotten more funding, but we'll keep working on it. And at least we have, unlike any other outfit that makes ionizable uh, machines, you know, all the competition. One, they can't come close into the actual quality of the machine, but they have nothing that they can say that they have done to elucidate their product's efficacy in a scientific and rational manner. And Enagic, to Mr. Oshiro's credit, has absolutely done that. We well, could do more. 
I don't know what all the politics are, but there you go. 100%. And I love that you said that. And then that brings up my next topic, which I love to talk about the drinking water and all of the, the, the benefit and, and everything that's happened in these studies. So everybody needs to get this book if you don't have it, because there's so much more we could talk about. And I, I could literally sit here and talk to you all night long. So, um, but we won't keep you all night. Um, even though there's so much more to talk about, we're just kind of scratching the surface. But let's talk about the specialty waters because you touched on the 2.5 and I really would like to go back there, especially with the wound care. So that has been one of my favorite waters with what this does. Can you talk about that and all of the benefits of having that water? Yes, well, let me say that when you, uh... I have, I have studies, they were not done by Enagic, so I cannot say to you that it is an official position of Enagic, but the studies were all done on the Super SD501 by independent people, friends of mine, and uh, they have actually allowed me copies of the results of the studies and have allowed me to use them. First study was done at uh, in Minnesota at uh, the ATS lab in Minnesota. It's a very well known uh, laboratory, and they do bacteriologic testing. They studied Kangen Water 2.5, Super SD 501 produced. The ORP for that water greater than a thousand plus. And they found that there are over 150 organisms were tested, viruses were tested and all that, and is a complete and total lack of resistance. They all were killed. And then there is a study done on the same machine by uh, EPA, Environmental Protection Agency standard uh, requirements to be a surface sterilization agent, like you would have for surgical instruments and, and surfaces to sterilize surfaces. And they use four bacteria, they use Staph aureus, they use E. coli, they use Salmonella, and then methicillin resistant staph. That's the standard. And it kills all of them. It, it absolutely meets all the EPA standards. Now, I can't say the same about the plain SD501. And I think the reason is that the, I figured this out and I've, I've actually shown it for my own satisfaction the ORP has got to be plus 900 or greater. And if that's met, that's what will happen. So it is a wonderful agent. It's great for you to wash your vegetables. My family and I, uh, when we were all younger, we spent much, much time in Mexico, uh, specifically Cancun. We loved Cancun. And we would rent the place and what have you and live there like my daughters, my wife and have. We'd go to local grocery stores and they'd give you these little packets of things because they wanted to make sure you washed all your vegetables, which you never have to do in the house, but you had to wash for vegetables. Well, Kangen water would be absolute perfect thing for that. That would absolutely do everything that you can do in your own home and you can sanitize your home. You can put it on any wound, a dirty wound or a clean wound. There will be no pain. It will kill the germs, it's antiseptic. And your tissues, they will look healthy, they will look red, they will look like they're healing and they will not deteriorate. There are stable solutions of hypochlorous acid that make a hypochlorite ion, which is the killer the killer substance, okay, for the bacteria. Well, if you have 
a stable substance like that buffered, after two weeks, your wound will start to fall apart. It won't look healthy because now you're killing the tissue. That will not happen with the canning water because it's evanescent. By the time an hour goes by, there's nothing left in that uh, uh, water to kill anything, but it just takes nanoseconds to kill the germs. So it's, you understand, it's a wonderful ongoing use that, that is so profound and so good for you. Now, I love that and preventative. So for example, you know, I'll spray it in my throat or gargle with it. <clears throat> yeah. I know that there's okay. dentists that use it for pre-rinses. Well, I met one dentist, I can't remember her name. She's a dynamite lady. And she did a lot of root canals and stuff. And she would do the root canals and irrigate the canals out with uh, kangaroo water. Uh, they use other things in dental medicine, but she was kind of a revolutionary because she found that this thing didn't hurt. People didn't have to put a little brushes down their root canal and all that kind of stuff. It would just kill everything. It was great. Yeah. I think there's a video on that. I, I was on a video with her. But uh, she, I mean, she was absolutely thrilled by the efficacy of that water. Now, you can't make it a claim because Enagic has not proven that per se, but I know the machine can do it. Right. Absolutely. And I've had friends with horses, um, veterinary friends, you know, using it on animals as well. So, you know, animals are mammals, you know, the dogs and the horses and the cats. And so it's the same thing for them, correct? Like I've seen people use it on horses that get injured a lot, you know, and they have to use these expensive antibacterial type medications and they're using their 2.5. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll tell you a real quickie story here. Uh, we had Hugo and Cody. Hugo is an English bulldog. Kate, Cody is a yellow lab. And uh, when we moved uh, to Arizona, uh, uh, Cody stayed home in Massachusetts with my daughter and my son-in-law. And Hugo, they lived together. They were girlfriend and boyfriend. They had breakfast together every day, each bowl, and then they would switch their bowls. And we did the old Kangen water try. And we would put regular water in, they'd go there. We put one regular water bowl and one Kangen water bowl, and they would muscle each other out of the way to get to the Kangen every time. Dogs know what's good for them. They absolutely do instinctively, and they can smell at a level that we can't, right? They have that sixth sense, so they know things, you know, yeah. um, but they also have the, the smell because we can definitely smell. I know I can smell if I go to a place where I'm, you know, I can smell the chlorine in water sure. and, and other things. So, yeah, dogs, definitely, you can't fool them, can you? I have a lot of questions here, and a lot of them are specific to. Um, specific conditions, which, you know, I know that, I mean, we're very careful and we don't have to make claims. We know that we're talking about what, you know, the, the, the efficacy and the benefits of, of the water on the body in general with hydration and antioxidant and, and you know, um, the detoxification and all of those things that come from being fully hydrated. But a lot of people like to ask questions on specific conditions. How do you answer when somebody asks you like, Will this water work on, you know, this or this or this or this? And they'll they'll bring up, you know, a specific condition. What what do you say to to that? Maybe. Look, there's a lot of water cures only one malady. It's called thirst. It cures thirst. It cures no disease, no human condition. The word cure cannot be associated with Kangen water other than to quench one's thirst. However, Kangen water has superior hydration. Kangen water has certain products that 
a pro I'm sorry, certain properties that we now know are good for your body and are actually incorporated effectively into your body so that they can work. We know that. And beyond that, that's all we know. But beyond that, we also know that that knowledge has opened up a slew of opportunities. I mean, I could think of a rel relatively simple study in like nursing homes. Right now, I uh, have a part-time job. I'm a consultant for hospice for people who are dying. And, you know, I think Hippocrates, 3,000 years ago, the, the father of medicine, said, if you cannot cure somebody, make their death as pleasant and as uncomplicated as you can and help them to go to the other side. Help them. Don't kill them. Help them. Make them feel like that. And I believe we should do much more with hospice work because we're all going to go. And so I find that uh, Canyon Water has a huge application in that because dehydration, chronically ill people, the dehydration factor adds an additional misery to their end of life. Being more hydrated, yes, you're going to die, but it's so much better if you're fully hydrated and you can think more clearly and you can appreciate things more clearly. And so there are so many things that we could study. The Germans have done a very good work in nursing homes. In nursing homes in Germany, the patients have to have their urine tested for specific gravity every other day. And if they show that the specific gravity is greater than 1024, that means dehydration. It's incontrovertible. And they get dinged for that because hydration, they have shown dramatically incre it increases the quality of life of chronically ill patients, reduces the number of hospital admissions intercurrent while they're in the nursing home. And overall, you don't walk into some nursing home like you used to and it smells like pee. I mean, it's disgusting. That's so many things have to do with hydration and hydration is so utterly important that I can only tell you, go for it, you know, and Kangen water, you've got the best hydrating agent there. That, I, that is the best statement ever. And there's so many statements like that in, in your book. Um, so we talked about all three properties um, about, so the, for longevity, I mean, you know, hydration is everything for immune function, healthy blood flow, detoxification, like that is all, you know, going back to the body being hydrated, all of those things that we want for health and longevity, healthy immune system, like that all starts with the foundation of being hydrated. So having water that's actually absorbing and then having, um, you know, the antioxidant and then the improved antioxidant of our own body. So I'm just going through all the things that are so beneficial that, you know, are talked about and studied with, with, you know, all of these different studies in here. They're fascinating. Things like um, the testing of Congan water in sports recovery and inflammation um, right. revealed increase in red cell production um, resulting in increased oxygen delivery and carbon dioxide removal. I mean, that's, huge in, you know, not just athletes, but, you know, we're all in some athletic, you know, running around after kids or we're, you know, we're running in the airport or we're at home doing, you know, chores or whatever. So movement in any way, I mean, I happen to work in a gym and, you know, of course the athletic component comes into that, but could you speak on that? Because that statement, um, I circled it like twice. Well, uh, I think that was uh, the, the second leg of the studies we did. And that was this experiment involving 13 healthy human volunteers who were subjected to a exercise challenge 
because we know that exercise produces a stress response, right? You're going to have to crank up your adrenal glands. You're going to have to do all kinds of things when you exercise in order to accomplish that appropriately. And so they studied these young people, and they were all each controlled. This is in a college town, Klamath Falls, Oregon. And so I think the age range was like from 18 to like 34. Many of them were students, some were faculty, and they were recruited. There were 13 of them. And I think what you need to understand that this study was done absolutely according to all the requirements of the National Institute of Health. We were on trials.gov. We had all of the studies approved by an independent reviews board. We had all the uh, things, because when you deal with human beings, you've got to make sure they're safe. They've got to be paid. They've got to be examined. They've got to be certified as healthy. All of these things. So it's quite a thing. And that's what makes it so expensive. Anyway, they were their own control, which meant that the whole group would drink Klamath Falls 8.5 pH tap water for three weeks, undergo the exercise challenge, have all of the certain instant things measured like their white blood count cell, their red blood count cell, those simple things, heart rate and so on. And then there was a real important psychometric study approved by the uh, American Psychiatric Association, which is subjective responses, meaning how did these people feel? What were their symptoms? And this is a kind of study that is accepted as being very, very accurate. How quickly did it take them to recover? How did it blah, blah, blah. So that study gets done. Everybody went home for a couple of weeks and then they drank Kangen water, 9.5, minimum of three liters a day for three weeks. And the whole exercise program was repeated. <clears throat> So when the analysis was complete, there wasn't any question. The people who drank the Kangen got over the joke much more quickly. They went back to baseline more quickly. Their aches and pains disappeared more quickly. They, they recovered more quickly. They performed better. Their red cell count went up. <clears throat> their white cell count was less. There was less inflammation. And <clears throat> That psychometric study, again, they all felt better with the Kangen than without the Kangen. No question about it. And that's when we also collected all the blood samples and they were analyzed subsequently. So there you go. <clears throat> Fascinating. Fascinating. Well, and, <laughs> you know, to feel better, you know, I, I love all, I love all of, the explanation, I love the physiology. This is this is huge for everybody to understand why we feel better. We know we feel better. We know we feel hydrated. I'll ask people, how do you feel? I feel hydrated. I feel better. I feel, you know, I've had people say that they feel more <clears throat> cognitively um, clear, you know, uh, more energy. Mm -hmm. I've heard people say they sleep better. I mean, we know the body is 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 re you know responding to better hydration. Um, because of all the things that we talked about. So that's absolutely huge. What would you say, I've got um, a couple of questions here about people that feel like the detox, you know, we have the, the different um, strengths. I, I like to talk about it, the different strengths of antioxidant and it's referenced on the machine as a pH 8.59 and 9.5, which correlates to the higher antioxidant, correct? Is that the way you would describe that? I am not sure. Okay. I, I tell you what I think the, the absolute key to the efficacy of the water is it's the ORP. Okay. It's the energy overall that it imparts. Yeah. Uh, and that 
ultimately trickles down to the antioxidant effect and to the intracellular effect and so on. So I'm not entirely clear what exactly it is, okay. why we feel better per se, but the hydration part is important. The cytokine response is important. The anti-inflammatory, all of those combined are important in that. Right, right, right. Yeah, so um, so I guess my question was the, the correlation of the 8.59 and 9.5 being, you know, um, basically a kind of a, a way to describe the potency of the water. And if people are drinking 9.5 versus 8.5, and sometimes people feel what they would consider a detox, what what do you say about I have a that? real problem with detox? Okay. You know, detox is when you have been drinking too much and they put you in the place and they get oh. you, make you sleep for a week and they dry you out and stuff like that. Uh, I am not so sure that I buy a quote detox effect from the can of water. Okay. Uh, one of the most important substances that is used in poison control and in all kinds of different things to get rid of stuff is water, right? So hydration flushes out things out of our system. I'm not so sure that normal person who uh, you know lives a normal life needs to be detoxed. And so I'm not so sure what people are detoxing from. I do know this, water alone is a detoxifying agent. And beyond that, I don't wanna speculate how much the 8.5 detoxes you or the 9.5 detoxes you, because I hear some very unbelievable kind of stories. You know, I was feeling terrible and then I drank kernel water and I felt terrible. And my distributor told me I was detoxing. Well, I'll say universally, in my experience, the vast majority of people, the day they start drinking candy water, feel better. They don't go through some period of mysterious uh, lack of well-being or sweating or detoxing. And I, I, I guess maybe my confusion is I sort of liken detoxification like, uh, you know, withdrawal. Mm. Don't withdraw from anything but can of water. In fact, it's good for you, no good. matter what you do. So drinking, drinking. I'm trying to weasel out of the question, but I just don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, it's just something we hear a lot. You know, some yeah. it's not everybody, but some people will say, "Oh, go down to the 8.5." So I was just curious what your take is on that, because I know I've had people that say, you know, they felt tired or they felt a headache. Um, so just the hydration value alone of the water flushing could be bringing that. You know, I also think that some people's intestines are a little more sensitive than others. And if you hit them with the 9.5 right away, they tend to get a little loose bowels mm -hmm. and people don't like that. Uh, so starting with 8.5, you know, two weeks and nine and then 9.5 over a six week period, it's, it's totally reasonable to do. First, tang and water, I ever drank was 9.5, didn't bother me any, I liked it. And I kind of uh, tell distributors if they ask me, give your prospect the 9.5 to drink. Why? Because that's guaranteed to have an effect if you never drank it before, guaranteed. Something will happen to them when they drink that 9.5, which may not happen with the 8.5. And that could vary depending yeah. on the person, which basically in the long run, regardless of all of the, you know, the conjectures or whatever people are saying, um, or, you know, um, it just shows that the water is powerful, that it's doing something, it's hydrating you, right? Right, exactly. Yeah, yeah it's hydrating you. I love that. I love that. Okay, I've got about two minutes here for anybody to have, um, Victoria, do you have a question? Donna, do you have a question specifically? I do have a question. Thanks, Lori. That was amazing, Dr. Filzer. I just wanted to clarify a little bit. I know that you spoke, you touched briefly on the pH and the body's pH and all of that. 
I think it's important. I just wanted to know what you can speak to regarding these chemically altered pH bottled water that people are drinking and how that's different from this technology. Well, here's the one thing, they're dead waters. Every one of those pH adjusted waters are dead waters. You know, for example, in a lot of the uh, states on the West Coast, Washington, Oregon, the natural pH water in the ground is 10. And that's a stable water, it doesn't seem to hurt you any, but it's not physiologically active because there's no ORP behind it. It's stable, it's a stable compound. Kangen water is a living, it's an electrically active ORP water, and that's the profound difference. Does that answer your question? Okay. Did I lose you? He's trying to unmute. Dead water versus living water. We use that right. terminology a lot. Um, yeah. Dead water has, you know, um, uh, yeah. So we use that terminology a lot. Donna, do you have a question? Yes, thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Filter. This has been phenomenal and lots of great information. I just love your book and I, I share it with, I give it to all sorts of people. So thank you so much for doing it. And I look forward to you doing more studies. My question, because I am a, um, I try to be an athlete. I try to maintain my physical health at my young age of 59. And I want to maintain that into, um, to be a hundred. And so I want to know, what would you tell somebody? Cause I get this asked all the time how much water as an athlete or just a general person do you need to drink on a daily basis would you recommend to someone well we know the company and i think it's a good recommendation you know the uh what is it a half an hour an ounce per pound of uh, half an ounce per pound of body weight that's what they usually recommend on the other hand, uh, I've got some beached whales around here. You know, they weigh 300 pounds. If you told them to drink half an ounce, they'd kill themselves on water intoxication because they would mm -hmm. drink so much. I kind of have a magic number. In ambient temperature, ambient temperature, three liters of water a day is plenty. And for virtually anybody, uh, and I like to go by the 70 kilogram man, that sort of is, is the baseline. And when you uh, put that all together, three liters is about just right. Now, remember, 125 out in the desert, you know, you can drink eight liters because it'll come off your skin in, in no time whatsoever. And that brings me to one real quickie, if I can just say it because people are on dialysis, for example, and they have profound water restriction. Well, certainly Kangen water would be the better water to drink because if you get 700 liter allowance, milliliter allowance or a liter allowance or a liter and a half allowance, that Kangen water would get inside your cell much better than the other water that they're restricting you to. You understand? There are actually a lot of studies uh, around the periphery where people with chronic renal failure who have no urine output and stuff get better, get substantially better when they drink the kind of water because they have better perfusion of their kidneys. Okay. Sorry, right, I went off script. No, that was a great answer. Actually, that was, I was going through the chat. I wasn't able to keep up with the chat um, during this. This has been so phenomenal, by the way. I can't even begin to thank you, Dr. Filter, for, I mean, I just want to stay here all night. <laughs> but that was one of the questions. That was one of the questions that I just saw. So you answered a question that somebody asked about dialysis. So that was absolutely necessary information. Good. Some people are on water restriction, right? For that reason. Sure. sure. Yeah. Absolutely. And so that makes perfect sense that why wouldn't you drink, you know, but everybody, why wouldn't you drink water? If you're drinking water, why wouldn't we drink water that's actually absorbing faster 
that's delivering antioxidant that's helping the body um you know i've got um i've got lanny with her hand up and she's got a question do you have time to answer that yeah pretty much yeah i think so. okay then we'll let you go okay mine's a real easy one because you've answered all my personal questions and thank you so much this has been absolutely amazing but i have a 15 year old dog and i just want to know which ph would be the best for him 9.5 Okay, that's what I wanted to know. Yep. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I love that. Okay, there's so much more. I mean, there's so much more. To, this just opens up so much more that we want to know. But thank you so much for your time. I can't even uh, tell you how beneficial this has been, how valuable this is to all of us to know what to say, to know, you know, the correct answers, and to get more information because we all really want to share the true information, you know, and what's shown in the studies. So we can't wait for more, the studies that are coming as well. Um, what would you like to leave us with, um, Dr. Filter? More words of wisdom, anything you'd like to share about Kangen water, about, you know, anything. We're just, what, whatever okay. you'd like uh, to say. I, I, I would basically, I really appreciate being asked I always have a good time. Uh, I, I think that people are so good and so nice. And I really want to make sure that you get a little ammunition because you've got a great and a good product. And I appreciate being asked and you can ask me anytime. I'll be glad to be back. Oh, well, that, that means everything. I am going to ask you again. I can't wait to have you back. Um, I hope to, to meet you and your wife in Arizona someday. So I would look forward to that as well. Thank you again so much for your time and your wisdom and experience. We are just so honored and so grateful. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to unmute everyone. Be well. You, yes, and you be well. be well. Yes, 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 guys. If all of you love this session, you can type 777 in the chat box. I know there was internet issue. I know there was some volume sound issue, but not to worry, we will have a replay again also, uh, since we already have the link like what Rita shared. This is not for public circulation, but we will have a closed door, indoor, Genuine seekers who want to know more about this session and more about this information on Kenyan water, we will definitely have this session. But with such an amazing uh, product that we have, we also have a very, very good business potential. Drinking water is a trillion dollar industry and the alkaline technology has just begun into drinking water industry, guys. And Energic is a billion dollar company tomorrow in Saturday, Nourish and Flourish. Uh, 112th week, we are going to talk more about the number games in Energic business. So see you guys tomorrow. Thank you, Rita, once again. Gratitude from this platform. And uh, thank you all the guys. Have a good night. Shubhratri. And uh, if we can have a click of pictures together on the screenshot, all of you can come here quickly. Switch on your videos for the most uh, important aspect of celebration in this whole system is the screenshot that we hang around together. The future legends of the water industry are all here. The millionaires, billionaires, trillionaires in the making and uh, highly appreciable. If someone can help me get a screenshot, Suma, once again, if you can really click it, Bala, if you can help us, anybody reach out, any one of you most welcome. Thank you and uh, gratitude if the screenshot is taken for all of us. God bless. Have a good night. Thank you, guys. Gratitude. Gratitude to all.